from Karma Yoga Center. I'm Katrina Gustafson and today I'm going to be talking to you about the full moon that is in the sign of Libra at the spring equinox on March 20th, 2019. The energy around this particular full moon I think is really lush and really abundant with um, lots of new beginning energy, especially around relationship, relationship with yourself and relationship with others, either partnership in business or in family or possibly romantic. But there's a very uh, beautiful opportunity for harmony in the collective to uh, come forth. And I'll try to explain that to you of how I see that coming out. I, uh, a couple years back, made this vision board, if you will. Um, it has magnets on it as planets, and it has all the 12 houses around the zodiac signs with um, words that represent what they are. It helps me keep track of where all the planets are. And I wanted to bring this out to kind of show some different aspects that are happening. It's probably hard for you to see, um, but it'll give us a visual or a starting point to work from. So as I mentioned, the sun moved into the sign of Aries. It was in Pisces, that's the end of the zodiac. And this line here demarks the beginning of a whole new astrological cycle. So from my opinion, when we hit Aries and we're at zero degrees Aries, we just entered into Aries on the 20th. When we enter Aries, we begin the new year. To me, this is the new year and that's why um, we see all the new birth of flowers, like these beautiful jonquils or daffodils, which is so spring-like. Uh, we see the crocus, the tulips, we see the little buds on the trees, all the little eggs are starting to um, come forth into the nest, the nests are being built. It's just a brand new beginning, resurrection time. We come into Passover, we come into Easter, it's rebirth. It's new beginning. So this is like the starting line of the racetrack and we're all jockeying into position for a brand new get-go. And Aries in itself is a very um, aggressive, forward motion kind of energy. It's a fire sign, it's a kickstarter, it wants to get things done. It doesn't always weigh out the consequences, but it goes and it uh, has a lot of thrust, has a lot of emergence and a lot of, um, go get it kind of energy. So this is the beginning and a, and a good start to this next cycle that we're coming around the sun in. I have this little bee magnet representing Chiron because Chiron kind of has a little bit of a sting sometimes to it. If you remember from previous reports, Chiron is in mythology the archetype of the wounded healer. It's half man, half horse. It's a liminal creature. It represents being spiritual and human at the same time. It's about carrying that wound of, in our humanness from lifetime after lifetime until we heal it. In uh, yoga terms, it would be our samskara. Until we can clear that samskara, we keep dragging it around the wheel with us until we come to terms with it. And here it is saddled right up next to the sun. They're conjunct with a two degree variation. And really Chiron is, is fairly new into the sign of Aries too. So it's at the fresh start starting line um, for its return all the way around. It'll take much longer than the sun will to go all the way around. But it's saying let's clear some energy on these wounds. So this is the part of the relationship with self that I think has a really beautiful opportunity to get healed. You have this fresh start of both the wound and the warrior coming together to take off at the finish line, or at the starting line rather, and get ready to go and take charge of that situation. And so it requires, of course, a lot of self-awareness, but Aries is very self-aware. Aries is all about me, me, me. It's um, 
that first sign, so like a newborn babe, they don't have no awareness of all the other bits in the world, they're just them. They need food, they need their diaper changed, their um, basic needs kind of situation. And that's similar to the Aries sign of, it's, it's just basic needs are really all it's after. It's wanting to just move forward as quickly as possible. So we have the sun in Aries, conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, and in the opposite side of the wheel is where the moon is at zero degrees Libra. Libra is about we, us, community, partnership, relationship. It's about compromising. It's about balancing and equality and working together in harmony. And so there's this full moon and it's a super moon it's super close to the earth is what it means and so extra vibrant extra big and it's looking back at this sun in Aries and saying how much balance and equality can you put into this healing opportunity the moon is how we talk to ourselves it's our inner voice our inner feelings it's um, like if I, the sun is how I speak to you, how I speak or address um, that people on the outside of me, and the moon is how I talk to myself internally inside my head. So the moon in this beautiful um, relationship sign is talking about its emotions, reflecting back on its wounds on the individual side. Beautiful opposition for self-healing. But the moon in Libra, which is the we, is also a great opportunity for all of us to feel this fresh start simultaneously. The spring equinox and the full moon is a rare thing together. It doesn't, it's not a given that the full moon is going to always be opposite at equinox. So we have this full luminous moon at a fresh start that the collective is feeling this energy or thrust or desire to emerge into equality and balance in relationship, not only with each other, which would be blessed, but with the earth herself. There's a, a rising in the collective that is saying, no more plastic bottles, no more straws, pass on that pass on the plastic bags, be responsible and carry your own tote to the store. You don't need to drink out of a straw. Bring your own water bottle everywhere you go and refuse to buy these plastics. This is a collective thrust moving forward, seeing this uh, awareness that we need for relationship with the earth. That's an example of the collective feeling this harmonious energy of balance and equality in relationship. Now, the couple of things going on here. The relationship is a balance of these two energies and you have to be careful when you say masculine and feminine because people oftentimes will take that to mean gender, like men and women. But balancing the relationship of the masculine and the feminine is an energy that's within the individual. We have a masculine dominant side and we have a feminine uh, creative, intuitive side. And those need to be balanced, to be whole, to heal. The root word of whole or holy or wholesome comes from the word healthy or heal. They're all the same root. And so to be that complete whole self, we need to look to balance these energies of the masculine and the feminine. Well, at the same time of the opposition of the sun and the moon in the individual Aries and the relationship sign of Libra, we have a square. A square is that 90 degree coming together. We have Venus in uh, Aquarius and we have Mars in Taurus and they are creating a hard exact square of 23 degrees. This is the masculine and the feminine and they're in opposite or squaring or com um, combating each other. Squares don't always have to be combative. I should I catch myself on that. Um, they could come together and create um, two fists making a stronger hold. 
but oftentimes the squaring usually means there's going to be some challenge involved. So the masculine and the feminine find challenge at this time, at the same time that there's an opportunity for this great healing energy in relationship. But the way I look at that is sometimes you have to sit down and have those conversations that can be challenging and difficult so that you can pull apart and weed out and sift through what's really the matter at hand, what's really the wound here, so that it can have some of that luminous light to heal it and showcase on it. So be aware of this square of Mars and Venus to each other. When you have that in your awareness, that sometimes helps to keep and manage those temperaments and use emotional maturity. The moon is our emotions and it's in this balanced house. So it's a really great time to have balanced emotions. So use that when you feel this square coming up. Now to add on the opposite side of potential conflict, there's a really beautiful sextile. A sextile is another harmonious line. It's a lesser degree than a trine, a little closer together, but it means harmonious energy or positive affluence on the situation. And you have Jupiter trining Venus. This is really harmonious. This is a chance for um, big expansive love to come through. And it's in the inventive sign of Aquarius and the vision seeker of Sagittarius. So this could be big vision, big love, big um, new invention around uh, the romance situation or even something, it doesn't have to be romantic, it can be uh, big love in a family situation, maybe healing some uh, father-daughter kind of uh, relationship as well. So there is that positive aspect happening at this time with Jupiter and Venus, big love there. Also, you have, I'm using another little um, B magnet to represent another um, kind of a little bit of a sting to it too, um, but not always. Black Moon Lilith. She's a lesser known uh, planetary energy uh, that we reference when we do astrology. She represents the sacred feminine. And Black Moon Lilith is right next to Venus. They are conjunct. And Venus, her home base, one of them, is in Libra. And I've always equated the moon, which is in Libra, to be like the little sister energy to the big sister Venus. And then like that great aunt, Black Moon Lilith. So here's these three feminine energies. These feminine planet energies are looking back to their moon sister in their own home house. This is Venus's own home house of Libra, protecting or putting a strong, um, we call it disposed. She, um, Venus is disposed in uh, on the moon in Libra. So caretaking or guarding this quality of balanced energy around relationships. So there's a positive flow of the feminine working on our full moon. And then let's go back to the masculine aspects. So we have Mars, who I talked about last time, conjunct with Uranus. But Mars is in Taurus, that's the bull, and that's an earth sign. And it is trining or having a harmonious connection to Saturn and Pluto. And this little guy is representing the south node of the moon. But Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn. Capricorn is also an earth energy. So you have Taurus and Capricorn, strong, grounded, earth kind of energy. Saturn is the disciplinarian, the principal, the judgment uh, maker, the uh, judiciary piece of the branch. And Pluto is our soul, the deep soul that knows all the things. And they are in a trine with the warrior, Mars. Mars is home in Aries. So everything I said about Aries being that thrusting, go forth, get it done, um, create change, be a catalyst, is the same energy as Mars. They're same, same. So Mars is talking to the judge. The, the warrior is talking to the 
disciplinarian and the judge and saying, let's make a pact here. Let's do some harmonious things together for the good of the whole. When it's a trine, it's for the good of the whole. And we also have this work for moving forward in equality and balance for the good of the whole with the moon in Libra. So there's a lot of positive vibration around balancing relationship of the masculine and feminine within ourselves and within the collective. The patriarch is crumbling. We're watching it crumble before us. We're seeing um, a lot of positive feminine energy rising to the surface, not trying to overpower, but to come into balance, to, to stake its claim. The young woman who's the Nobel Peace Prize candidate, uh, Greta, who started this movement on Fridays to ditch school to save Mother Earth. That's a strong, positive, uh, sacred feminine rising to bring balance and equality back to the earth. Bless that girl's soul. And this is what we're seeing. A lot of earth energy focus, a lot of balance in relationship, that Jupiter, Venus, like believe in love, never give up on love because it's got a big charge right now. And I think uh, the last thing I want to mention as far as aspects to be aware of is Mercury retrograde conjunct Neptune in the sign of Pisces that we did mention in the last two reports. But I want to bring up again that there's potential. Neptune is the boundless, um, open imagination. It's the ocean. Uh, it's Poseidon. It's the free waters and anything goes. And then Mercury is the communicator and the one planet that represents wanting to know things and wanting the information, the information collector. And it's retrograde, so it's kind of like on a little bit of a vacation, not moving as fast as it normally would. Maybe it's doing the backstroke in these Neptunian waters. But it gets a little dreamy. And so to be aware of having these great ideas and these great visions and these big dreams about what you want to do, but not having any movement behind them to make them go. So don't let them just stay in the water floating. Use that Aries thrustful spring equinox energy and burst out of the earth like these daffodils have done and come forth and let these ideas soar. And so with that, um, together there might be a lot going on in your mind, a lot of dreams coming to um, the table for you. You're like, oh, I just can't keep stop. I can't stop thinking about all these wonderful things I could be doing. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. My suggestion would be narrow it down and pick a couple things that you want to take off on that starting line with and shoot for and get those done. And then you can go back to some of those other great ideas that have been conjuring up with Mercury and Neptune together, but tackle them, um, pragmatically and let your Aries soldier ride hard, but do so with focus and concentration and dedication. Use that Mars and Saturn discipline, the warrior discipline here. This is like a general. Get your general to take uh, charge of that situation. It's all there working for us for our benefit, so why not take advantage of what the cosmos is offering for us and not work against it, but work with the flow. If uh, you are enjoying these astrology reports, you can sign up for our monthly memberships. They're available at the website at karmayogacenter.com under the astrology tab. Every two weeks, we have a full moon and a new moon report. I do the full moon reports. Michael does the new moon. Those are free. We have an additional monthly video that comes out. For example, Michael just did Chiron, and he did Black Moon Lilith. He did the inner planets and the outer planets and explains them all in a lot more depth. So if you're interested in learning more about astrology, you can subscribe for our monthly membership. It's only $12 a month. And we'll see you in two weeks at the new moon, and happy spring. Jai Ma.